Hello students, under the international trade policy, the topic for today's discussion is cost and benefit analysis of tariff and rate of effective protection. Let's start with the introduction. Tariff affects both domestic consumption and domestic production. An imposition of import tariff by a small nation reduces the import of the nation. Consumer surplus would reduce and producer surplus would increase after the imposition of a tariff. The concept of consumer surplus and producer surplus are useful in the cost benefit analysis of a tariff. Let us understand the cost and benefit analysis of tariff. We assume that nation A is a small nation. Nation A imposes an import tariff on commodity X. An imposition of tariff will not affect the international price but increases the domestic price of commodity in the nation. Let's understand with the help of a figure. We measure quantity of commodity X on X axis and price of commodity X on Y axis. PW is the international price line which is parallel to X axis. It means that an imposition of tariff by small nation cannot affect the international price of the commodity. It increases domestic price only. Now, DX is the demand curve for commodity X and SX is the supply curve of commodity X. According to the Autarchy situation, when domestic price is $1, nation A produces 10X. The domestic demand for commodity X is 70X. The remaining of 60x is imported. Now, the effect of an import tariff. Domestic price is $2. Domestic consumption of commodity x is 50 units. Domestic production of commodity x is 20 units. And import of commodity x is 30 units. And imposition of import tariff increases the domestic price of commodity x in nation A from $1 to $2. An import tariff reduces the domestic consumption of commodity X from 70X to 50X due to price rise. Now, an imposition of tariff increases the domestic production of import competing industry from 10X to 20X. Due to fall in domestic consumption and rise in domestic production, the total import of nation A falls from 60X to 30X. It means that Due to an import tariff, domestic consumption falls, domestic production rises and import of the nation declines. An imposition of a tariff increases the domestic price of the commodity and hence the consumer surplus falls by ABGI that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to $15 plus $5 plus $30 plus $10 that is $60. Similarly, an imposition of tariff increases producer surplus by ABDC area that is area 1 that is $15. Due to imposition of a tariff, nation A collects DGHF that is $1 into 30X that is $30. Let us understand the cost and benefit analysis. As per figure 1, the reduction of the consumer surplus is ABGI that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 that is $60. DGHF is $30 is collected by the government as import duty and an increase in producer surplus is ABDC that is $15. It means that $15 is redistributed from consumer to producers in the form of increased producer surplus. The remaining $15 that is 2 plus 4 depicts the protection cost or dead weight loss to the economy due to an import tariff. Area 2 that is $5 arises due to tariff imposition. An imposition of tariff transferred some domestic resources from more efficient production of exportable commodity to the less efficient production of importable commodity X in nation A. This is the production component of dead weight loss. Let us look at the definition. Dead weight loss refers to any reduction in consumer or and producer surplus. Now, area 4 that is $10 is 
the consumption component of dead weight loss. A tariff increases the price of importable commodity in relation to the exportable commodity. It twists the consumption pattern in nation A. This analysis shows that an imposition of a tariff redistributes income from consumer to producer in the form of increased producer surplus. It also redistributes income from nation's abundant factors which produces export commodity to nation's scarce factor which produces import commodity. This leads to inefficiencies in the economy. This is referred to as protection cost or dead weight loss to the economy due to an import tariff by a small nation. Now, let us understand effective rate of protection. A nation can impose a tariff on imports of the inputs and imports of the final commodity. To protect the domestic industries from foreign industries, a nation often imposes a lower tariff on the imports of inputs than on imports of the final commodity. Protection depends on two things. One, the tariff imposed on the final product and secondly, on the taxes and subsidies placed on the inputs. Let us take an example. A nation may import steel without import duty but imposes a tariff on the imports of automobiles. Nominal tariff rate cannot measure degree of protection because protection depends on nominal tariff rates imposed on final commodity and tariff imposed on inputs as well. To understand the concept of effective rate of protection, we need to understand the meaning of value added. Now, let us understand what is value added. According to value added, value added is the difference between the selling price and the production cost of intermediate goods. Therefore, value added V is equal to Px minus Cx, where Px is the price of commodity X, Cx is the cost of inputs to produce commodity X. Let us define effective rate of protection that is ERP. Effective rate of protection ERP is defined as the ratio of difference between the value added at domestic price and the value added at world price to value added at world price. Therefore, ERP is equal to V dash minus V upon V, where V dash is equal to value added at domestic price that is inclusive of tariff on the final commodity and intermediate inputs. V is the domestic value added under free trade. Assume that we are dealing with a small nation and therefore an imposition of a tariff cannot affect the international price of the commodity. Suppose that the fixed international free trade price of commodity is P. The number of imported inputs are also fixed in price in the international market. The sum of the cost of these imported inputs going into the domestic production of commodity X under free trade is Here AIP is the cost of imported input I going into the domestic production of commodity X. Now, ERP is equal to V dash minus V upon V. Therefore, V is the domestic value added in the production of commodity X under free trade that is equal to the difference between international fixed price of the commodity X under free trade and the cost of all imported inputs under free trade. Therefore, V is equal to P minus summation a i p is equal to p into 1 minus summation a i. Here v dash is the with the tariff on commodity x and on imported inputs going into the domestic production of commodity x the value added at domestic price is v dash is equal to p into 1 plus t minus p summation a i into 1 plus t i where T is the nominal ad valorem duty on commodity X. Ti is the nominal ad valorem tariff rate on imported inputs going into the production of commodity X. 
substituting equation 3 and 4 into equation 2, we get E R P is equal to V dash minus V upon V. Therefore, E R P is equal to P into 1 plus T minus P summation A i into 1 plus T i minus P into 1 minus summation A i upon P into 1 minus summation A i. Therefore, E R P is equal to P into 1 plus T minus summation A i minus summation A i T i minus 1 plus summation A i upon P into 1 minus summation A i. Therefore, E R P is equal to 1 plus T minus summation A i minus summation A i T i minus 1 plus summation A i upon 1 minus summation A i. Therefore, E R P is equal to T minus summation A i T i upon 1 minus summation A i. The relationship between the rate of effective protection and nominal tariff rate is number 1. If A i is equal to 0, E r p is equal to t. Number 2, for given values of A i and t i, E r p is larger, the greater is the value of t. Number 3, for given values of t and t i, E r p is larger, the greater is the value of A i. Number 4, when A i t i exceeds t, the E r p is negative. Let us take an example. Suppose that price of commodity X in international market is $40. To produce this commodity, nation A must import $30 worth raw material from abroad. Nation A's industry of commodity X creates $40 minus $30 that comes to $10 worth of value added. Assume that nation A imposes a 25% nominal tariff on imported commodity X. This will increase the price of commodity X to $50 that is $40 plus 25% of $40. In this case, nation A's industry of commodity X creates $50 minus $30 that comes to $20 worth of value added. Thus, the value added increases by 100% and this is the ERP that nation A provides to its industry to commodity X. Let us take another example. Assume now that in addition to the 25% nominal tariff on imported commodity X, nation A imposes 10% tariff on import of raw material which is required to produce commodity X. An imposition of tariff on raw material raises the cost of raw material from $30 to $33 that is $30 plus 10% of $30. Therefore, the value added is $50 minus $33 that comes to $17. Thus, value added has increased by 70 percent that is $17 minus $10 divided by $10 into 100. This ERP of 70 percent is lower than the rate of 100 percent that existed before the imported commodity X was taxed. Let us conclude the session. An imposition of tariff redistributes income from consumer to producer in the form of increased producer surplus. It also redistributes income from nation's abundant factor which produces export commodity to nation's scare factor which produces import commodity. This leads to inefficiency in the economy. This is referred to as protection cost or dead weight loss to the economy due to an import tariff by a small nation. Now, effective rate of protection that is ERP is defined as the ratio of difference between the value added at domestic price and the value added at world price to value added at world price. Thank you.